How's it going, everybody? This is Jason Ostrowski, and welcome to another episode of the Everything Real Estate Podcast. We have a great episode lined up for you today. My guest is Alex Neff, a.k.a. the Real Estate Daddy. Alex is a true rising star out of our Yardley Newtown office, and in today's episode, we'll be discussing the power of communicating through video. Now, before you say it's another podcast about me having to do social media videos, consider this. Out of Alex's roughly 25 real estate transactions this year, 40% of his business has come directly from social media, specifically through the power of his videos. So how does he do it? What's his secret sauce for building an online audience that not only follows, but actually wants to work with him? We're going to get into that and more in today's episode, so let's jump right in into the conversation with Alex Neff, and we'll pick it up on the other side. My guest today is Alex Neff, aka the Real Estate Daddy. Knowing a little bit about podcasting yourself, this is this is actually a treat for me because for us to be able to get together for this episode, you already brought your own microphone, so you're you're all prepared. So it should be a lot of fun today. I do have to say, you have beat me right away with your silky smooth Luther Vandross slash Barry White voice. <laughs> it's like listening to Velvet made into audio when you speak. So how is the market over there in Bucks County? Oh, man, it is Hot. H-O-T-T-O-G-O. Hot to go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a fantastic job. And today you and I are going to discuss communicating through video with an emphasis on communicating, because just because you do video does not mean that you are communicating effectively with your clients or your audience. Right. And so obviously you, on the other hand, must be communicating effectively with your video because you told me yesterday that you get 40% of your referral business directly from social media and your videos. So you could say the proof is in the TikTok Instagram pudding, right? So my first question to you is, why do you think that you're having such success with your videos? Thank you so much for the question, Jason. Honestly, thank you so much for being here. Before I answer, I just want to say, like, this is such a treat for me. You know, as a as a newer agent, only three years with Fox and Roach, uh, you know, I would I had listened to some of the older episodes with Jeff McDonnell, Andrew Jacobs, Lynn Kelleher, Jimmy Burgess, and Rajiv. I mean, these are all just absolute rock stars, and some of them in my own office in the Yardley Newtown office. And I'm just I'm so excited to be here. So, to answer your question, Jason. Uh, the videos for me have been a wonderful tool to try and attract like-minded people to do business with me, right? Because it might be a stepping stone to meet new people that I wouldn't normally meet in everyday life. Uh, maybe I've had a conversation with them uh, before and we don't really cross paths all the time, but that social media is such a wonderful tool for me to continue to remain top of mind. The styles of videos that I do, I call them edutainment, where it's a combination of educational and entertaining. I want to kind of attract the people that think of business like me, where we want to wear life like a loose garment, right? Where we can be very go with the flow, because as we know, in real estate, things are very fluid and very flexible. And luckily, we have contracts to be able to be that guide throughout the whole process. But still anything can happen on any moment throughout an entire transaction. So that's why I like to attract people that are able to go with the flow and be flexible like I am, but also understand the severity of what we're doing in any real estate transaction because buying or selling a home has a lot of mental, financial, spiritual, physical implications, right? People get physically ill sometimes from the stress of buying or selling a home. So what can I do to try and make the process seamless and fun and exciting and uh, and hopefully stress-free? That's such a great answer. I can tell you right away that from the first moment that that I saw you on Instagram, I, I gravitated towards you, right? You you have, we talk about people that, that kind of pull you in and attract. And that's what you want in business. And I can say, just objectively speaking, from a client perspective, I, I find myself being pulled towards you because you're you're this fun loving guy, you, you know, like you had said, like, you, you know, entertainment is part of your package here. 
Um, so I want to know, and I think you already answered this question already, but do you deliberately think about your brand when you're doing videos or do you get an idea that sounds fun in, in your mind and you're like, I'm just going to do this. So how strategic are you when you're planning this stuff? So I sat on a panel last week with, uh, with Bob Kelly, Mick Sizelove and Jennifer Rennell at the Lehigh Valley mini convention. And Bob said something that was just perfect. It said done is better than perfect. And, uh, I feel like when I'm putting videos together, it's not so much about the brand. It's about who am I as a person, right? Am I able to have fun and attract people that are able to have fun as well? Or am I going to be so uh, so rooted and fundamental in what I'm trying to do? Because some of the low-hanging fruit with videos, yeah, we can do video walkthroughs and we can do tours and we can talk about neighborhoods and we can uh, we can go – do food critic reviews at restaurants, right? That's low hanging fruit for us as agents to, to be a part of the community. But what can we do by getting like, I mean, I get bombarded with emails every day of things that are happening industry wide, hyper local. How can I take some of that and just be a pass through to let the people that I serve, the community that I serve know that these other things are happening, but in not such a dry, like, Here's a here's a blank article that may or may not have something to do with you, or here's something that's changed in the industry that you may or may not entirely understand. But it sparks that conversation, which is so important, right? Because if they're seeing it on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, now LinkedIn has video, YouTube Shorts is a great po- uh, platform nowadays. If they're seeing it through these different platforms, and how many eyes am I getting? It's simple marketing. More eyes more leads, more leads, more sales. And where this isn't all about the sales for me at the end of the day, it's a great way to get in front of people and to really uh, hone down and master my craft, which is just trying to help people achieve their goals. Do you have a certain amount of videos that you try and release a week? Um, you know, what's the sweet spot for you to, to get engagement and make sure that you're you're not losing your audience there? So early on, I was very, very hard on myself with like, I have to post at least two or three videos a week. I have to put uh, two or three different still content gra- uh, graphics online and put this whole long caption. Uh, I was very, uh, very strict on how I was going to do it. But as I started to do more business, I realized that I could not continue to keep up with it, right? I'm reaping the benefits of doing this business now. And it's attracting people to use me as their agent, as their trusted advisor. I couldn't continue to keep up with that two or three videos a week. It just became too much. And uh, I started to feel really bad. So I would go maybe four or six weeks without posting anything and be like, oh, I got to do it because business is now slowing down, right? So as a... I got more into this video niche. I call it a content cadence, right? Where can I just continue to keep up with the beat of the drum, whatever that beat is for that week, to be able to post something? Now, may I do at least an hour of research and development every day. Some people call it a phone addiction. I call it research and development, where I'm going through TikTok, I'm going through Facebook Reels and Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts to see what are other agents doing in our industry that can be fun. What's trending in our industry and how can I marry that sound with an article that just came out about something that's fundamentally shifting, uh, whether it's lower interest rates, whether it's the NAR settlement, whether it's now buyers have to have an agency agreement before they walk in through the threshold of a, a of a property, right? So how can I put all of this together into a funny video that gives a bit of an explanation of what's going on and uh, you know, not really beat myself up about it if I'm unable to put, post something that week? One thing I do notice when you do your video is that you are doing that, you know, that R&D, right? I can tell that you're keeping up with what's trending out there. You kind of find a clever way to incorporate it into your video, uh, which I think I think is what we should be kind of our goal should be to do, right? Because you're going to get more engagement that way and understanding social media the way that you do, you can tell you know what you're doing. 
you know, and I'm going to bring up another agent's name. Shout out to Brittany Keys. I think I had mentioned her. She was on the podcast before. She's awesome. Same thing. Like she finds a way to find what's trending to, to incorporate into her style and what she's doing. And so I keep I keep track of both of you on social media. I always like I always say I like to stalk people on social media that do a good job. And you are definitely one of those agents. I want to get back to you being kind of fun loving because how do you strike a balance between being fun loving and goofy and offering professional value to your clients so that they get educated as well as entertained? Because I can see you doing one or the other a little bit too much and then maybe, you know, that that engagement falls off. So how do you strike that balance as well as you do? That's an excellent question because I think it is so important to really differentiate because at the end of the day, we're doing something that is life-changing here, right? We are helping people uproot their their entire lives, sometimes their entire family, to move to another place that is brand new. And this home might be somewhere where they're for where they're gonna be at for generations, right? So I I kind of consider it somebody called me the anonymous architect, right? The guy behind the scenes that's able to help the future generations of this family in this home and be there forever. So how do I differentiate between the goofy and the fun loving and the professionalism? It sparks the conversation. What I do on the social media is it starts the conversation with Alex, I love your videos. I think they're hilarious. And I just tell them I'm a much better realtor than I am a dancer. So when's a good time for us to get together and talk about your real estate goals? Do you know anybody that might benefit from a conversation about real estate? Because ultimately that that's the goal, right? The videos are fun and I have a, a blast making them, but the goal is to get more people to be able to use me as their agent. Yeah, ultimately, right, it's it's a it's a uh, a vehicle for you to use in your arsenal of marketing. And and right. our goal is to be obviously you mentioned like we all want to do business, but we we want to have fun along the way. And you definitely do that. I mean, I know before I even met you, you were the big guy with the beard who danced on Instagram to me. That's how that's how I knew that's how I knew you. Like just scrolling through my feed, you know, and then I'd see this guy dancing. And I'd be like, I, I like this guy. And then I figured out, you know, I've, I saw that you were one of our agents. You were out of Yardley Newtown. I'm like, this guy's great. And then you and I met at a mini convention a couple of years ago. Um, and then you started your own podcast. So, like, you you have this, you know, this, this Alex Neff media stuff going on all the time. And we always talk about you and I trying to strike that balance of, like, do actually doing our job and doing, doing all this other extracurricular stuff. So... You know, I'd always I always admired you because you you just put yourself out there, right? You just do it. You don't it's like if it fails, it fails, right? So a lot of people don't have that that mindset. What would you say to those that are still hesitant to show up on camera and are cut, you know, it, it's all the the paralysis by analysis kind of crowd over there, you know? What would you say to them? So there was a book that I read a couple of years ago, and it was called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. How many times, I mean, the, the essence of this book is basically saying, how many times have I been afraid to do something, and I felt that fear, and did it paralyze me, or was I able to accomplish that goal at the end, right? Because honestly, my mortgage didn't care that I got a new career in real estate. My car loan didn't care that I got a new career in real estate. I had to make this work. And as a newer agent that didn't have a ton of money to be able to really do all the direct mailers, to buy all the lists of of, uh, of pre-foreclosures or anything, to, to buy the cold leads, to get stuff in from Zillow or Realtor.com or anything like that, what was going to be the best tool for me? I already had this iPhone that has a ton of tools. We have a, there's a TikTok and CapCut are excellent tools at editing videos. Um, and Google is really powerful to just be like, hey, can I see what kind of analytics on things that are trending? Um, and uh, that was really for me of how can I just feel this fear and do it anyway? Can I get over that hump of not really caring what people think? Because the worst thing is that I can just delete the video, right? If I think it's off brand or it doesn't jive with my target audience, can, I can just delete the video anyway. And uh, when I get the, I call them the uh, the mental termites, right? When the mental termites start crawling around my noggin, then I'm like, oh man, I'm not good enough. This is stupid. I don't think this is good. Um, do I delete the video? 
I, I don't. I let it play out for at least a day or two to see how is it received because, like I said, Bob Kelly said before, done is better than perfect. And that's that's just my favorite line. Yeah, I want to follow up on that because, um, you know, I see a lot of your videos are recorded in your car. You know, mm-hmm. you're 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 not in some professional studio doing 100 takes to get it right. Right. And so can you speak on why it's important sometimes to get an idea and just record it blemishes and all you had said, you know, uh, what you just quoted Bob again. I, I feel like we we try and be so polished all the time. And sometimes the less polishing is better for us in terms of engagement. Right. It speaks to our authenticity. So I guess my my I guess my question is being authentic and having those warts associated with potentially some of your videos, do you feel like that's that's actually a positive rather than a negative? Absolutely a positive. It allows us to speak that language of the heart with our clients. Um, and I think just being able to relate to them on a human level and not put us up on this pedestal as the market professional or the uh, the the only person in town that you can go to like, yeah, that respect is wonderful, but are like, we're dealing with humans here. We're dealing with humans, human emotion, human fear, human excitement, human jealousy. We're dealing with all of these fundamental human emotions. So am I able to convey that I'm a human with a pulse that has funny stories and have sad stories? And can I tell that to my sphere of influence to be like, Hey, like I'd, I will do whatever it takes to help you achieve your goals. But like, here's some funny things that have happened along some of those paths. And here are some really tragic and sad things that have happened along those paths. I, I love, I love that um, you could just speak so honestly and earnestly to people online. A lot of people have a hard time letting their guard down that way. I, I actually have to, I have to talk about one of the videos that you did because I loved it. Uh, and and you were talking recently with a buyer at an open house, sharing the fact that they had the same name as your dog, yeah. uh, which, in which your dog's name is Dante, apparently. Uh-huh. Uh, and then and then you show Dante at the end, and I, I just I thought it was great, and you recorded that video while you were driving and then cut, you know, again to another video with your dog. So were you recording that video coming home from that open house and just spontaneously recorded it while it was in your mind? Or did you go home and you're like, uh, you know, I I have to do this at some point in time. How, How did that come to fruition? Yeah, so I, I left the open house. If you actually look in the video in the background, you'll see the uh, the lawn stakes out of the, the open house signs in my trunk. And uh, it was right as I was leaving the open house. I'm pulling away and I'm thinking like, man, I shouldn't have said that to this guy. Like, you know, who wants to say that they share a name with their dog? Who wants to feel like, oh, yeah, I'm just this guy's pet, you know, and I just met him. So <laughs> I felt so bad, but I thought it was a funny story that I thought everybody would uh, appreciate hearing because you know if you follow me on social media you'll know that you know I, I love my dogs I love my wife I love my family and uh and it was just a fun and I love real estate so it was just a fun way to marry the two well follow-up question did you pick him up as a client or was he like already represented or what's what was his deal no so he he submit he, he was working with an agent submitted a really strong offer but unfortunately on that property we got a better offer but I told their agent hey keep it as a backup because you never know what happens and funny enough we're negotiating some inspection stuff now and I'm going to reach out to them to be like hey what do you think so so yeah. it's, you never know Hey, and Dante to Dante, right? I, I yeah. just had, yeah, I just had a deal where I, I, I probably shouldn't say the well, I'm not going to say their first name, but it was Moyer to Moyer, and so like the name actually helped us get the property, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah, you know, it's always the little things in real estate. So, do you use any? You had mentioned a couple before, but uh, for our agents listening out there. What are some of your go-to apps to help you edit or enhance your videos on social media uh, before posting them? Do you do you lean in strong to anything in particular? What what are you you what are you using nowadays? Yes, yeah, so I mean tick, TikTok is primarily where I make all of my videos because I think they have the most resources available in app. Um, since when I'm doing my R and D uh, on TikTok, there are things that are made by CapCut which is a wonderful way to make, you know, kind of like funny meme videos. Um, And then something else that I used uh, in the past and also uh, 
presently when a good article comes out is something called Prompt Smart Pro. It's a it's a paid service. It's, I think it's fifty bucks for the year, and uh, basically what it does is you can type out. Uh, an entire script and it'll record you while you're reading it so that way it looks like you're looking at your phone not looking off screen trying to read something like a robot but that you know you're a human con- you're a human having a conversation that has been well thought out and planned um, so prompt smart pro is what i use as kind of like a teleprompter yep yep i like captions for that um you know it's got that ai feature where it actually fixes your eyes so it makes you look like you're looking at the camera when you're actually reading something which is amazing i mean we're going into this whole new space like rajiv's already there rajiv's like on another planet when it comes to ai but all this stuff is starting to trickle down into what we do every day and it's it's really amazing out there so for all of you that are thinking about doing video that Maybe you just haven't gotten into it as much as you want to yet. You have all these tools out there just waiting for you to make your job easier. Um, So I want to ask you a question because you're someone that I admire online and on social. Um, Who do you admire on social media that that in your mind does video well? Are there any accounts that you would recommend for people to follow for inspiration? Um, You say you do a lot of R&D, right? So there's got to be some some go to accounts out there that you like. Yeah, so uh, uh, the broke agent is always really uh, funny. They're, yeah, they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because because that's the kind of stuff that I like when I'm watching videos. Right? Is how can we marry the the funny and uh, and really humorous kind of stuff in our business uh, together with the severity of of what we're trying to accomplish here? They are hands down my favorite account to to look at. Also, Zillow Gone Wild is always fun to look at. Uh, I think Linda Emerson had a listing uh, last year or two years ago where I believe there was a toilet on the landing of the steps and it made it onto Zillow Gone Wild. Um, so that's always really fun to be like, hey, people are so creative. Look and see what uh, how people have uh, updated their home through the years. And, and uh, yeah, th- those are my two favorite uh, uh, people to follow. Have you ever seen the guy? I can't remember the guy's name. He's a young guy, but he's a realtor and he does the speed tours. Speed ever, tours. Yeah. Speed he's, tour, and, and I think he's like crack, York that, County-ish. Out in, uh, like okay. that. That, that kid cracks me up. I, I think he's like hysterically funny when he goes through these. But it's but again, oftentimes it's just about standing out and being memorable. And people want to be a part of that process. You know, and so here's this young kid. I mean, he can't be any more than like what is mid-20s, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, running through these houses as quickly as he can doing these tours. And it's hysterical. And I'm like, I just I find myself just watching all this stuff that he does, you know? Yeah. And there's this guy over in Monmouth County, New Jersey. His name's John Natale. He's really huge on TikTok. And uh, he has a coaching service that I don't utilize, but he gives out a ton of free advice on TikTok on how to structure your day as an agent, how to incorporate content, what kind of content to do. Um, He's really, really, uh, he does a fantastic job at just really trying to help agents as a whole, not just in Monmouth County, New Jersey, but all over the the country of uh, how can we start to incorporate video, especially thinking now uh, in 2025, you know, if you're not incorporating this into your business, into your business plan for the new year, you're really missing out on the mark here. I mean, I've been able to, and you know, I, I don't say this to be braggadocious, but it's just a fact out of my experience is uh, I've been able to increase my business significantly year over year where these have been some of the toughest markets that the veteran agents are telling me about. Uh, my first year, full year from uh, 22 to 23, I, I only did eight transactions. 23 to 24, I did 13 transactions, and now we're in 24 right now. Uh, going into 25, I've already closed 23 deals with another four under contract. And, uh, I mean, it's just absolutely incredible the power of video and what it can do for a newer agent that's just starting out, even a seasoned agent. Yeah, I, th- I think the fact that you're so young in your career and you're growing exponentially, you know, finding a way to do these videos to get you video. I mean, the the ROI on on your return and your your outlay is pretty minimal. Um, so there is no reason why anybody out there that's thinking about doing video but scared to do them like this is why you should do this, right? Because 
in the end, you are going to get more business from this if you do it the correct way, just like Alex is doing it. Um, Alex, I got one uh, one last question for you, okay? So there's no denying that you have a great beard going on, all right? So what goes into taking care of a beard like that on a daily basis? Because every time I tried to grow my beard out, it starts to itch, and it's it's like too much, and I have to shave. So I, I got to ask you, this is probably the first time I've ever asked this question on a podcast, but do you use some kind of like beard oil there? Do you comb that thing? Like what? Like what's going on with that? That That's day. a great question and something that I get asked more frequently than you would think. And they're <laughs> always really surprised to hear the answer. So I use Dove Men's 2-in-1 every other day, <laughs> right? Because you don't want to dry it out. So a combination yeah. of shampoo and conditioner. And then the brush that I use is a uh, like a soft bristle, bristle brush that you would use. Um, I, so I went to high school. It's, I went to Central High in North Philadelphia, and there are a lot of these guys that would use this brush to get uh, waves in their hair. I use that same style brush for my own beard, um, and it, it seems to work out really well. So a nice soft bristle, medium bristle brush with the the wooden handle looking thing. It, it reminds me of uh, Will Ferrell in the Oh my God, what what is that? Uh, oh my God, Blades of Glory. Where yeah. he's got like that horsehair brush, and he doesn't let anybody like like touch his brush. I can see <laughs> yeah. that on your beard every day. So, all right. So I, I I have like a that was part A, and now I got part B to that last question. So who has the better beard out of these three people? Uh, Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, Dumbledore from Harry Potter, or James Harden from NBA. Ooh. James Harden, hands down. We, the the other guys, they they have the long like ZZ top looking beards, and they're nice, but they you know they get a little unruly for me. I I, I like a nice kept and sculpted beard, and I think I think Harden does a great job at it. He has his own like fruit snacks too, the the with the beards on it. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean when you, when your nickname is literally the beard, I think you got to go with James Harden on that. And I was gonna put Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top on there, but I didn't know if everybody would understand the you know the reference and everything. So I I went with Dumbledore over over Billy Gibbons. But I gotta tell you, those are some strong beards, and you're right up there with them. So before we get out of here, where can people find you online? Where can they follow you on Instagram? You know, where, where's the best place to see what you're doing online? So you can follow me on uh, Facebook, Alex Neff. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Neff, the real estate daddy. You can follow me on TikTok at Neff, the real estate daddy. Uh, yeah, those are the, the major platforms that I use. And uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about video or um, how I can help in any way. Well, Alex, you're the man. I, I love having you on here to talk about social media. Much continued success to you. Uh, your career is on an amazing trajectory, and I uh, can't wait to see what you do in the future, man. So thank you for your time. Thanks for being on with us today. Thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it, man. Have a great day. That was the conversation with Alex Neff. It was great to get to talk to him for a little while. Here are a few takeaways from our episode together. Number one, Alex's mentality when it comes to doing the videos is just get out there and do them. They don't have to be perfect. You don't have to think it through and have that paralysis by analysis. Sometimes it's better to be good than perfect and getting your message out there and being authentic with it. Let the blemishes kind of let that go. And just put your video content out there. As realtors, we have so much information to share with our potential clients. We need to get it on video and get it out to the masses. So number one, share your message. Don't be afraid to do that. It's going to help you and your business. Number two, and this is an important part of communicating and your strategy, who are you trying to reach? So think about your target market. Think about your niche. What are your clients doing out there? Where can you meet them on social media? So it's not just about getting the video out. Sure, that's important. But also it's about reaching the people that you're trying to 
target. And so when it comes to social media, that may be on different platforms. People hang out in different spaces. So you want to know where your people are. And it all begins with who am I trying to target? Who am I trying to reach out there? And then find the social media platform that corresponds to that and meet them where they are. Last but not least, one thing that Alex does very well, and I'm not saying that you have to hang out on social media every night for hours at a time, but he likes to call it his R&D, right? He's doing research on these different platforms. He's seeing what's trending right now. What are other people doing in terms of real estate video that's, that's getting attention from the masses? Alex looks for those videos, and then you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's it's really just reinventing somebody else's wheel. It's kind of taking what they're doing, putting your own spin on it, and get it out there to the masses, and that is working for Alex. Well, that's it for this week's episode. We will be back in another couple of weeks with a new topic, a new guest, and as always, if you want to hear something that we haven't covered yet, please reach out to me, jason.ostrowski at foxroach.com. And if you haven't liked or subscribed to the podcast yet or left us a review, please do so. It helps us to reach more people. Once again, this is Jason Ostrowski saying stay safe out there, stay selling, and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Everything Real Estate Podcast.